<laughs> Hello everybody and welcome in or welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be the second video in my experimental makeup monsters series. Uh, you might have noticed the ambiance is a little different, it's a little darker in here. That's because it is nighttime. I typically film in the daytime. However, I've already filmed this video once. And when I went to go edit it, the sound was really, like, really messed up. So here I am refilming it. You know, things I do for a channel. Anyways, so in honor of spooky season, I am choosing four different monsters and then sharing their lore and then doing makeup inspired by them. I'm not choosing the typical monsters, but maybe some monsters that you may or may not have heard of or want to learn more about. Disclaimer, while I do work to research these as accurately as I can, I'm not an expert, so if I leave anything out or if I maybe miss something, please feel free to add it in the comments, respectfully of course. So if you saw my last video in this series, you saw that I did unicorns, and in that video, I mentioned that unicorns can take on a little bit of a chimerical appearance and that wasn't by accident because today I am doing chimeras. Slightly more scary than uni unicorns, slightly less scary than other monsters on this list. But I think it's gonna be fun nonetheless. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this look and the lore behind the chimera. Yeah, as you can see, not really my usual setup. It's a little darker, but I think it might like add to the ambiance. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, so I pulled out a couple of things that I think say Chimera. Because I've already done this look once before, I already know what I use, but you don't. But also, I can edit it a little bit because that look didn't actually turn out the way I originally intended so I could edit this a little bit. Anyways, so I've got this one from Cleona. This is foiling. I've got Unexpected by JD Glow. This is Mood Ring by Terra Moons. This is Superstar by Colored Rain. This is Thrilled by Sydney Grace. Asteria by Davina. This is Forbidden by Sydney Grace. This is Tiny Tangerines by ColourPop. And then this is a glittery um, press shadow. And then I also pulled out my Hasina 2 palette, specifically for this color right here. I want to use a couple of these greens. Um, this isn't available anymore, so you can't buy it, but I figured I could use it because I have it. And then I also pulled out my Melt Muerte palette. And then I know I want to use this green lip from Sephora. This is the Sephora Cream Lip Stain in Enchanted Forest, I think. So let's go ahead and get into the actual look again. And as per usual, everything I actually end up using will be in the description box. So what? is a chimera. The chimera also, chimera with an A-E, means she-goat, was a monstrous fire-breathing hybrid creature composed of different animal parts from Lycia, Asia Minor, which is modern day the southern coast of Turkey. Many believe that the chimera was a symbol for the volcano in Lycia, since the surrounding area was known for its constant burning fires, constant burning fires, earning the nickname Mount Chimera. This is now believed to be called Yenartas, which means Chimera in Turkish. So our guy from my last video, Cecius, actually makes a comeback here, as he's believed to be the first person to identify the Chimera. And, and I'm not saying dude was lying. I'm just saying it's real funny how he seems to be the only one seeing all these creatures that no one else sees. I'm not saying he's lying, but it's giving boy who cried wolf Cecius. So the most common description for the chimera actually comes from Homer's Iliad. It's usually depicted as a lion with the head of a goat on its back and a serpent for a tail. It's also believed, as I said, to breathe fire and be female, despite the fact that it does have a mane that would imply that it's a male. However, there are depictions of a chimera with the hind legs of a goat with dragon wings and a head. So the chimera is considered to be the offspring of Typhon and Echidna, who also birthed such creatures as Cerberus or the Hound of Hades and Hydra, which is the giant serpent. I guess that whole like three heads thing kind of runs in the family. Maybe it's like a family trait, you know, like red hair or something. So as you may or may not be aware, the term chimera has come to describe anything that's made up of a lot of different parts or perceived to be made up as a lot of different parts or generally just perceived as kind of wild, like it's thrown together, very disparate. So next I'm taking my favorite, my Prime Beauty bronzer, of course. Boom. And 
doing what I does with it. I'm bronzing that hair, girl. So traditionally, the sight of a chimera was considered to be a bad omen since it would often appear before natural disasters and also terrorize a lot of the neighboring towns, the neighboring towns of Lycia, that is, which is, you know, where it's said to come from, which brings us to... All right, next I'm taking a little bit of this blush, which is Clay Too Much from Minted. As you might know, it's the only blush I own, so I'm using it like I always do. And next I'm going back in with this Juvia's Place primer because I'm really feeling it I think this is gonna be my new go-to I just wish it wasn't so runny like it's so runny so runny like this thing got a snotty nose or something so compared to other monsters in myth the chimera actually has a relatively small role in Greek myth so as the story goes the hero Bellerophon or Bellerophontes depending on what story is who is the Corinthian hero and also a son of Poseidon he's not the son but a son you know he's like I don't think he got mentioned in Percy Jackson but he's there like in real life so anyways the hero Bellerophon he came to the court of King Proetus I think is how you say it Proetus and so his wife Stenabia or Anatea in some versions fell in love with him but he rejected her advances trying to be a good guest and all that and I do agree that's probably a generally good rule of thumb to not sleep with the spouse of the person who's letting you stay in their court. Yeah, I think that's a generally good rule of thumb. Sis was not having that though. So she lied to her husband, the king, and said that Bella Refron, uh dishonored her. He did not honor her in the proper way that a guest should honor their queen and the wife of the king. Know what I'm saying? Whack. The king, however, did not want to kill Bella Refrone because he didn't want to violate the hospitality rules and kill a guest. So instead, he sent him to the king of Lycia, Lycia, that southeast coast of Turkey I was talking about. The king's name was Iabates, Iab Iab Iabates, I think that's how he say his name. Anyway, so he sent him to him, who's also his father-in-law. So his queen's daddy, he sent him over there and he secretly requested that he actually kill Bella Refrone. Dude was mad serious about it. Like he even sent an inscribed tablet detailing the crime to the other king of Lycia and demanding justice for, you know, his daughter slash his wife. Now I think in some versions of the story, it's not her father. It's like, he's like her brother in some, or you know, it varies a little bit, but I think in most of them that I saw, he is indeed her father. But do you know how mad you gotta be to send like an inscribed tablet, Ten Commandments style, to another dude saying, hey, kill this dude? Like, you mad. You big mad. Okay, so eyes are primed. I am next gonna take this color in the Hasina 2 palette, this green right here. I'm gonna start that off. So yeah, the King of Lycia was also pretty hesitant to kill Bella Refron for the same reasons that King Proatea, or the other king guy, was hesitant to kill him. Because Zeus and the other gods generally looked poorly upon those who violated that sacred bond between the guests and their hosts. And, you know, killing your guests is a pretty serious violation, I would say. So he also feared the wrath of the gods. Next, I'm taking Thrilled from Sydney Grace. So instead of killing him outright, he decided that the better course of action was to send him on what he knew was an impossible task, which was to kill the Chimera. So he did that knowing full well that dude would probably die in the process. So he just figured, you know, I can honor my son-in-law's request and have him killed without angering the gods. So it's kind of a mythical loophole, if you will. Now, pretty much anyone else on this journey would probably die. But not our guy Bella Refrain, though, because he had a secret weapon. Pegasus. Which is a winged horse, if you don't know what a Pegasus is. Now, this I'm a little unsure about because I couldn't really find... Again, I saw a couple of different versions when I was reading up on this. So... 
some versions say that he captures the Pegasus, other versions say that it was a gift from his father, Poseidon. But I think the most consistent one I saw was that he captured the, he went to a seer who advised him to capture the Pegasus. So I'm gonna go with that, but understand that there are like other versions out there. So anyways, the seer advised him to capture the Pegasus and that would help him in his quest. So he followed the seer's instructions and with Athena or Minerva's help, if you're looking into Roman myth, um, he received a golden bridle that would tame the wild Pegasus. So he actually became the first ever person to ride the Pegasus. So next, I'm gonna take this color, Katrina, from the Muerte palette. I just really wanna put it like on the outer corners here. So Bella Warfrone was able to use the Pegasus to fly above the Chimera. You know, shooting arrows, kind of Katniss Everdeen style, into the back of the monster. So the Pegasus for sure helped Bella Rafrone to dodge a lot of the fiery breath of the monster, because remember it does breathe fire. But he couldn't really manage to damage the Chimera in the way it needed to be in order to kill it. The high was too thick for the arrows to pierce. Which, you know, sucks. But that gave Bella Rafrone an idea. So I think I'm also going to take a little bit of this color up front. And when I say up front, I mean like in the like inner crease area yeah Anarchy's area so the weakened chimera was finally killed when Bellerophron attached a lump of lead to one of these arrowheads and then he shot it into the monster's mouth and remember it has fiery breath so he the with the breath of the monster after he fired the arrow with lead into his mouth it went down his throat and solidified all of his insides hashtag rip chimera so next i'm taking some of mood ring and it's going right underneath that bluey color yeah i think i want to take a little bit just a teensy bit of glitter glue as well to really make that color blue ring like pop off the eye so that's basically the end of the chimera in greek myth but that doesn't mean that chimeras don't exist in other places which brings us to so next i'm taking this blue maybelline eyeliner and i'm gonna line my eyes so i'm taking more of that glittery blue and bring that down here so one figure from early anatolian which is asia minor slash turkey art is sometimes considered to be a direct predecessor of the greek chimera the neo-hittite figure found in the same area that the mythological chimera is said to inhabit has a winged lion body a snake-like tail and a human head rising from its shoulders so i'm also going to take a little bit more of this glitter glue and put it on the inner corner and i'm going to take that uh shade foiling from cleona Another chimera is the Japanese Nue, which I think is how you say that. It combined features of a tiger, a monkey, a snake, and a dog. It's said to have the head of a monkey, the body of a raccoon dog, or a tanuki, the legs of a tiger, and a snake for a tail. It is a legendary yokai or mananoki, which is a spirit or supernatural entity. The Chinese Piju is one of the five auspicious animals of traditional Chinese culture, also known as a fortune beast. This lion looking beast has the head of a dragon and the body of a horse with the legs of a kilin, remember a unicorn, and is able to fly. So if it is an obvious unicorn can also be considered chimeras depending on who you ask. For the Chinese people though, it is an important part of feng shui and is thought to bring wealth. And as I was looking, I guess it's very popular to buy on um, like jade, uh, jade like, um, like little figurines of pijus for good luck which I thought was cool. I was gonna put a little bit of blue ring right there, just to kind of like make those, you know, blend a little more. They were already blending, but I feel like it might just add a little, little some some, you know? I'm also gonna put a little bit of that gold like right on top of the uh, where the light hits. So in ancient Egypt, Sekhmet was the goddess of war and destroyer of the enemies of the sun god Re, and was given the distinction, the eye of Re. She's usually depicted as a lioness or a woman with the head of a lioness. In the Indus Valley civilization of Harappa, the Chimera, it's unknown what this civilization would have called it, or at least I could not find the answer to that, is most notably made of the rear legs of a tiger, a cobra for a tail, a neck, the neck and front legs of a wild mountain goat, and then a human head. That's kind of chimeras all around, um, at least a brief history, which brings us to... <sighs> So I'm gonna go ahead and do my eyeliner. 
a mascara. And I can't do that and talk because I'm bad at that, but I'm gonna do it. So by the Middle Ages, the Greek myths about the chimera were largely forgotten. And as I mentioned earlier, chimeras have come to mean the general concept of a hybrid creature. So they appear in a variety of games, movies, and TV shows. And they actually do exist in real life, at least like in the science world, because science refers to a variety of living beings as chimeras. So in sciencey kind of terms, a chimera is essentially a single organism that is made up of cells from two or more individuals. That is, it contains two sets of DNA with the code to make two separate organisms. And that can actually occur naturally. I'm just kind of touching up now just to make sure it looks exactly how I want it to. So one of the most notable examples of this is when a fetus absorbs its twin in utero. The remaining fetus will have two sets of cells, one, from the, one of its own cells and then one from the absorbed twin, thus making it a hybrid or a chimera. This also happens when someone gets a bone marrow transplant, you know, because they have two separate sets of cells inside of them. And also people can experience what's called microchimerism, which is actually pretty common. And that's when a small fraction of your cells belong to someone else. This can happen when a woman becomes pregnant and a small number of the fetus cells migrate to her other organs. And a 2015 study actually suggested that this happens to most, if not all, pregnant women, at least temporarily. So, you know, if you were like talking smack to somebody and you called someone's mom a chimera, you'd technically be correct. You might also get schmacked, but you'd be correct. But I don't recommend that for the whole, you know, schmacked reason. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this NYX Duo Chromatic Highlighter in Twilight Tint. It's like a bluey kind of color. Yeah, just a little, a little sun, sun. I'm not trying to go full on like blue blue, you know what I'm saying? And then last but certainly not least, I'm taking that green lipstick. All right, and that is gonna do it for this video. Here is the final look. It's very green. It's very, you know, if dollar slime, if dollar sign slime was a person, here she is. I'm into it. And I like it a lot better than the first one I did. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There was a lot more to kind of mirrors that I thought, but I really, you know, I enjoyed doing this one. It was a good old time with this one, guys. As I mentioned, this is a very brief look at chimeras, but I am not an expert. So if you have anything else to add, or if you have anything, you know, you want to say about chimeras that I may have missed in the comments, please do so below. Very respectfully, though. All of the sources, as well as all the makeup that I use, will be down in the description box, as per usual. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe. I really, you know, I'm enjoying this series, so I want to know if you guys enjoy it, too. I have two more in the series planned for the rest of October. As per usual, you can find me on Instagram at DejaVu. You can find me on Twitter at DejaVu2. You can find me on TikTok at DejaVu3. However, I'm never really on there. And you can follow my podcast, Grossly Overqualified, found everywhere that podcasts are found. So until the next video, you guys have a good spooky season, and... Bye-bye.